I am unashamed. What about you? <laughs> so we are super excited to welcome Dallas Jenkins into the Unashamed Lair. I am super excited. I mean, we have been talking about you for so long. And so I have to say, I was getting emails about The Chosen for over a year. I mean, yeah. they people kept, they, you, have you seen this yet? Have you seen this yet? And I watched so little television that I didn't even know. And plus, I'm in that age group that's kind of challenged. Not as bad as Dad, but close. Right. So I so I was like, what is this thing? And so Jace and Missy finally launched into it and then got us all yeah. you know, up to speed. So, But we're super excited about having you here. Well, yeah, I've been hearing Chosen fans as well, who you mentioned it on a recent episode where you just said, Missy's been watching it, watching it. So I finally yeah. watched one episode and I loved it. Yes. And the the chosen army, as we call them, all the, they they blew up. I started getting social media messages and everything saying they're talking about you on on a shame. You got to go on the podcast, yeah. and then I get a text from you, yeah, uh, out of the blue. That's right, because we have a mutual friend. We uh, did feel him, feel him, yeah, feel him, McClear of all people. And, and I'd already sent a note to Zach, who's our who helps us with the podcast, my cousin, and I was like, can you find me a, some contact information for? It looks like Dallas Jenkins is the one who puts all this together. I said, I really want to get him on here. So I don't hear anything from Zach for like a week, which yeah. is typical. Mm. And then all of a sudden, Felham just randomly, like, I don't remember asking about it, but he just sends me your contact info. He said, you need to talk to him. We shared a editor maybe or something. Or, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, I think he would be fantastic. And I said, I've been trying to get this guy. So it was like. You know, it's weird is I didn't know all this was going on, but I've called Zach once a week for the past two or three months and said, have you asked this Dallas Jenkins to be on our show? <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Every time I asked it, he acted like it was the first time he'd ever heard it. I was like, even if they say no, it's fine. I was like, but I had mentioned the show quite a few times because right. I watched it the first time. And I told you before we started, started filming, I think when we had our little binge watch one night and I just kept looking at Missy and she had a smile on her face like the entire episode on into the next one. I was like, now this is, this is something here. And I was, look, I ran the whole emotional roller coaster just watching I me mean, because it's moving. And uh, so I'm, I'm tickled pink that we can perhaps combine Unashamed Nation with the Chosen Army. Oh man, they are so excited that, That's really that, good. that I'm, that I'm going here. And uh, I'm here in, in person because uh, your mom, yeah, because when you promised that Miss K would 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 feed us if we came, that's well, I'm, well, like, I'm, think, not, I'm not doing Zoom. <laughs> like I want to see you face to face. Well, what's funny get... about that is so <laughs> so for some reason, I, and now I realize it was it was suggestive. Your name is Dallas, so I thought you were from Dallas, right? But oh, I didn't. No. I, I did. I was like, yeah. I thought you were in the Dallas area, and so I was like, if you're ever over here, because you know we're pretty close to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And you said, you were like, where are you? <laughs> I was like, well, we're in West Virginia. Where are you? And he's like, oh, we're from Chicago. I was like, oh, my goodness. So then we worked it out for you to come because I, I promised him. I said, look, if you come, if you'll come here in studio, I said, we'll have a Miss K meal. And yeah. so what the audience can't see is not your whole family is. Well, with yeah, you. I'm bringing yeah. my, I brought my, my three of my kids and my wife who all grew up on Duck Dynasty and uh, all Want, you know, have seen Miss K's meals, but haven't participated. And so you're, that's, you're in today, yeah. you, know, you, got a, you got a good one coming. What gave y'all the idea to do this? Because I'm not a big TV watcher, but you know, Jesus number one crossed the board, and then Matt Dillon is <laughs> is right underneath him. Y'all, Dad watches a lot of y'all cut yeah. y'all cut Dillon out. Now the chosen has come up in there. <laughs> That's an actual compliment. He it said, really is. I mean, you're, if you're getting up there towards Matt Dillon, <laughs> we're, we're. I learned from that chosen. I watched them the other night. I learned uh, that seeing something mm -hmm. is far more powerful mm -hmm. than reading something, That's reading right. about something. Yeah. The scriptures, y'all were able to bring bring that to life because. If you think about it, if Jesus showed up in 2021 years since he came out of the Virgin Mary, if he showed up in modern day America, I'm just afraid he would catch the same, be the same kind of confusion in the religious right. world. I don't think much has changed. Right. I don't, I think <laughs> they would say, what in the world? 
Right. What, what about, do you think they would do that? Oh, absolutely. And, and I, that's actually one of the reasons why we did the show was um, I love God's word and I've been raised on God's word, but there is something about when you, when you can see it and feel it and we try to make you even smell it. Like when you're watching the show, we try yeah. to put you there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Jesus looks at the people that he encountered, my goal and my job as the, as the filmmaker is to make you connected to the people who actually met him. I believe if you can see Jesus through the eyes of those who actually met him, you can be changed in the same way they were. If you can identify with their struggles, if you can identify with their questions and say, he struggled with money, he struggled with taxes, he was like Simon Peter, you know, he was trying to provide for his family, but he couldn't. That's like me. Or in the case of Nicodemus, you know, the Pharisee, like I'm a lifelong religious person. I've been going to church my whole life. What, and that's, that's where your question comes in, which is would I recognize Jesus if he came. Mm -hmm. And when Nicodemus in episode six of season one has this debate with Shmuel, who's the other Pharisee and Shmuel is saying, this can't be the son of God because, and he starts quoting old Testament verses and he's, he believes he's really protecting God's word. That's he right. really believes it. Right, yeah. And Nicodemus is saying, well, but what if there's more? What if, what if, what if this, if the son of God, you know, really came here? What, and we saw him, would you know it? Would you recognize it? And uh, I think that, I think those are debates we have now. Every time we hear something that doesn't fit into our box, it scares us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really wanted the viewer to be able to see Jesus. You know, if you look at the disciples, they were viewed as unschooled, ordinary right. men. And all these religious leaders of the day said, what, what is this all about? I mean, how, how do these people know anything about the, the Messiah, the Savior of the world? These dudes, they've never been to any kind of theological school, that's for sure. Right. And it, they were just, it was a hard sell even then. I think it would be the same now, you know, but uh, y'all did a great job in presenting that. Well, I don't cry that much, but that brought more than once. Wow. I mean, From oh, I, me, tears me, come me, out yeah. of me. There's like, I don't well, cry easily, but boy, <laughs> after watching that, I'm like, you yeah. know, it was real. There's yeah. moments mm -hmm. where that happened. I mean, when Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, I mean, I don't know, I guess, you're looking at it so much, you know, but that just, there was something about the girl that was acting yeah. as a Samaritan woman. And just in that moment there, just cause it's a story that we all know. Yeah. And somehow that the passion was yeah. lacking, you know, when you read it, but when you see it on screen based on her lifestyle. And I think the fact that she kind of started having a religious conversation Right off the bat, where you know, talking about where you worship and if you were a prophet, you know, that just kind of gets lost of, of the emotion of her encountering the Messiah in this moment and being filled with such crazed joy. Well, there's two so. really important things about that scene. That's because that's the the final scene of season one is Jesus's encounter with a woman at the well, and two things are going to make that scene more powerful if we do it right. One is getting to know her a little bit before she encounters Jesus. Because whenever you see a Bible movie or a Jesus movie specifically, it tends to go from Bible verse to Bible verse, miracle to miracle. You don't know anything about the people that Jesus right. is encountering. Right. And that's because in the Bible, the Bible wasn't written to be a TV show or to give you character development. It was to yeah. show that Jesus was the son of God and point people to Tell you what happened. Yeah. These are Jesus's greatest hits right. to prove that he was the, <laughs> the Messiah. Yeah. Well, we want to introduce you to those people that encountered him and what, what their before must have been like. My wife did, did the chosen devotional book and she talks about the before and who we are before we encounter Christ. And when you can identify with that, when you can set that up properly, then that God moment is truly and powerful, truly powerful. So yeah. we see her a little bit earlier in the episode, but then also when you get the cultural context and the historical context, that's what a good preacher does is they right. show you a Bible story and they say, okay, here's what's not in the strip, but that we, that we know about. We know what the Pharisees were doing at this time. Here's how, why the Samaritans and the Jews hated each other so much. Right. Here's why this was such a big deal for Jesus yeah. to be talking to this woman in the middle of the day. Yeah. And when you get that, then that encounter really starts to hit you. Yeah. And also in the backdrop of our culture is there's so much division. There's so much racial tension with all the things that are going on, especially the last couple of years. 
I think that also adds into it because it's yeah. like here's here's the way. Jesus is the way to bring people together yeah. by focusing on the similarities that we don't focus on. That yeah. we're all you know wanderers. We're all flawed people. We're all trying to make sense of life. And here he comes, you know, speaking the truth. One, one other thing I wanted to ask is who, who is the brain trust? Because I know when I'm watching this, as someone who's been studying this book since I was 14, so do the math, almost 40 years, because I can see there had to be a, there, there had to be meetings in rooms where people are talking. Now, how are we going to do this? And let's not screw this up because you're right. you're basically trying the weight of trying to present right. the creator of the universe in human form, even though we have the Bible, it's just a weighty matter. So I was wanting to know kind of who the, the writers are, the brain trust, or yeah. what, how, how did that come about? Yeah, so uh, there's two other writers besides myself. So the three of us get together and we spend a weekend um, this, this was a few years ago when, when I first had the idea for the show and we decided we were going to do it. We got together for a weekend and thought through the whole show. We wanted to know, all right, if we get to do all seven seasons of this show, we know where it, we know in the Bible where it ends, you know, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection. So how do we work our way backwards to make it so that that is really impactful and who are the main characters we're going to focus on? And, and, uh, but most importantly is, this Jesus guy, <laughs> if we're going to, if we're going to have scenes that aren't from scripture, if we're going to introduce him in scenes that aren't from scripture, because if the, the scenes in scripture are like two verses a piece, you know, yeah. the woman at the well story, you can read that in about 45 seconds. Yeah. So there's going to be things that aren't in scripture. And that is, that is a big responsibility and it requires a lot of prayer, it requires a lot of surrender, um, it requires you to get to the point where you have to not care what critics are going to say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you, you and I were talking before we got on about Pharisees, modern day yeah. Pharisees too. Um, and, and, and learning to love them and learning to appreciate that you're going to have critics no matter what you do. Yes, sir. Yeah. But we got to the point where it was like, no, we really believe that this can impact people. And we really believe that if you can see Jesus in this context, that it's actually going to bring you back to scripture even more than ever. And we hear every day from thousands of people who are saying, I'm reading the Bible more than ever. So to answer your question though, we also wanted to make sure that I had accountability because I've got my own ideas, but I want, I don't ever want to go outside the bounds of scripture. Yes. Uh, even when I'm doing scenes that aren't from scripture, I never want to contradict the character or intention of Jesus in the gospels. Mm, yeah. That's what wakes me up in the morning and, and puts me to bed at night is I can't ever contradict his character or the intentions of the gospels. Yeah. And so uh, we have a, a Bible consultants, you know, my, my, my new Testament professor from college um, is, uh, is a brilliant, brilliant Bible scholar. He reads all our scripts. We have a messianic Jewish rabbi uh, who reads all our scripts for the cultural context and the biblical context, just to make sure that if I ever step outside of bounds that I'm yes. reined right back in. Somebody. But I was in, I was, yeah, I was in Israel um, a few years ago and I was in Magdala, the birthplace of Mary Magdalene. And I was in a synagogue that they had just found about 15 years ago. They just uncovered the synagogue. And uh, I was kind of looking and researching Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene. And I really felt God lay it strongly on my heart. Um, and this doesn't happen often, but where I really feel like he's talking to me. Um, it's not verbal, but it's like, you know, he's yeah, laying something yeah. heavy on my heart here in this amazing Holy Land. And I felt like he was saying to me, in a few years, this show is what people are going to think of when they picture Jesus's followers. Yeah. And I'm not going to let you screw it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, <laughs> on one um, hand, that was humbling. On the other hand, it was yeah. exciting yeah. because I really did feel like, all right, I'm not claiming that this is God inspired. I'm not claiming any spiritual authority, but I do believe that he's going to, he's going to, he's going to rein me in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a good, he's, 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 he's your be. ultimate accountability. <laughs> Win them by all possible means. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take you're, it. Let's you're take just it. one more in a long line. Yeah. On the way this works. Yeah. Everybody, each person doing his job, offering your body as a living sacrifice. It's a, Y'all have done a powerful thing with that. It's a good thing. Let's take a break. So a lot of people have asked me, because uh, Home Title Lock has been one of our sponsors for a long time, can thieves really steal your home's title? 
So uh, Home Title Lock has sent us a testimonial. This is a guy that stole 150 homes and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Here's what he said. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh, no, I have title insurance for that. No, it's in my name. Or he would have to get some special document. They would call me. You know, (laughs) what he's calling you? After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. So you want to go to HomeTitleLot.com, register your address, make sure you're not already a victim, and enter radio for 30 free days of protection. That's HomeTitleLot.com. Use the code radio. What's ironic is that this God told Dallas the same thing Missy told you about this podcast today. Don't screw it up. <laughs> I'm nervous. Same, w- same words. <laughs> I've only, we've done almost 300 episodes and I've only been nervous twice. Once when is when Missy was in that chair because I had no idea. And she had been listening to some of them. So I thought, oh boy. Missy and I were working. Uh, working and the other the one is today because she's sitting about 10 feet from me right now. Uh, <laughs> and my wife is about two feet she's next right there to her. Too, so yeah. Yeah, so they're both staring, kinda, staring right at us. Look, that's I why I'm so. sweating today. I actually I thought y'all did an outstanding job. Y- you would have thought the way y'all presented it, which is the true way, you would have thought he's just a normal looking guy. Well, in the first time you see Jesus, because this is what some people get confused by when they watch the first episode of season one, you're about three fourths of the way into the episode and people are saying, where's Jesus? Like, I thought this was a Jesus show, but we're spending the time really building the world, introducing you to the people before Jesus comes along. The first time you see Jesus is in a bar and he's where Mary Magdalene is at her lowest point Mm -hmm. of her life where she's trying to drown her sorrows. They, they said he was a glutton and a but drunkard. See, yeah. when, well, I, I thought of Matthew Baptist, 11. John the Baptist had a demon, and Jesus is a glutton and a drunkard, according well, to the ones who right. saw him down there. Right. Well, I'm just telling you, when I saw that scene, I thought, yeah, somebody's re- been reading our Bible. Whoever was in the room <laughs> that produced the show, because I was, you know, I'm a skeptic at heart. I mean, how I came to Jesus was because at my dad, I'd seen transform literally in front of my eyes, but since his past was bad, mm-hmm. I was kind of bitter, and I'm like, well, since he's doing that, I'm not going to do that. And so as I'm studying, I was trying to find a way around this, but it's like the deeper I got, I was like, well, wait, wait, wait wait a minute here. It it just was too powerful for me to say, no. So you know, I had to come come to grips with my own life. But when I saw that, because I was being skeptical as a as a. But I love the intro. It's the only intro of any binge show that we watch that we watch it every time because I love the song. Yeah, the I intro love, music. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love the fish. Like your shirt. I like the fish yeah. going one way and because you're like, what does this mean? Oh, 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 it's lovely, <laughs> lovely. I just like it. I I think it's what it is. Is it's not cheesy, and most church productions, God love them, they're just cheesy. Wow. And people expect that. And a lot of people say, well, it's because they don't have money or enough money or it's a budget. But let's just face it. A lot of religious people, they're just cheesy. And what are the odds, Jace? What are the odds that when they were out there on the Sea of Galilee, throw your nets on the other side, they're not catching any. We started out and we, when we moved down here. I said, Miss Kay, I'm going to fish the river and we're going to catch enough fish that we're going to sell the fish. And we'll we'll wait till the duck call takes off, but but I have to have some way oh, wow. to feed us all. So I said, we're going to let mm-hmm. the river, let the Almighty bless us with the fish that we catch. So that 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 scene, throw it on yeah. other side That's of the one boat. Of my the right, we've had been on the river, and if you're doing it for a living. Jason and I could identify with that. I mean, I could big time. Now, at yeah. that moment of the show, I said, "Okay, well, number one, it's hard to pull off a miracle because you were trying to simulate a miracle." And I was right. like, well, to, to already, "Portray a miracle, yeah, right?" I'm like, "How yeah. are we?" So I was like, "I'm going to cut them some slack." So that was pretty good. <laughs> but I also made a trip to Israel, and what I was fascinated when I found because we ate at one of these restaurants that the doc went out into the Sea of Galilee. Well. I'm an outdoors person. So these kids were throwing 
tidbits of their food off the dock and these fish were coming up and I was stunned and our, our unashamed viewers knows what I'm fixing to say. Cause I was stunned when I found that the sea of Galilee is filled with Opelousas catfish, which is the greatest eating catfish hmm. there on, is on the planet, on the planet. And there's different kinds of catfish. And I knew God knew his fish. When, when they put the in <laughs> well, the that's what I thought. I said, "Oh, it makes sense." Look, now I know why Jesus God knows his fish. <laughs> Post resurrection, Jesus. What's the first thing he does? Maybe not the first. He's on the bank. They catch the fish Let's and eat. they have a little. Yeah, I was they're like, that good. They're <laughs> that good that he's eating them, even though he no longer has to. He's what is he eating the fish for to sustain life? No, he's imperishable. He's just doing it because he can and he wants he to. He came out of the grave and they were like, preach to us. He's like, give me a moment. <laughs> Got to get some fish. Gotta get some yep, fish. Yeah, watch yeah. this, you know. And right. so I, what I thought, though, is I thought they need an outdoors uh advisor consultant so i'm offering if you for future because i would have i would have simulated i was like it must be catfish and i noticed one of the guys when he was skinning the fish that he he would have gone nobody trust don't feel bad about this nobody on the planet's going to notice this but as a kid who cleaned fish every day for years you're always going to go toward the tail you know, but it was a quick scene. I was like, they need an outdoor consultant. <laughs> and so I'm volunteering my services. Now, if, I, I don't mind playing a demon possessed guy and typecasting. Fall, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a rugged indoorsman. So I, I, I would, I would like to have you around maybe, but yeah. I thought, I thought we got the fish. There's one, it's the one moment where Jesus is helping Simon's wife. Yeah. Preparing for fish. I watched that. And, and we he does some... about three times the right way. And then once the wrong. Okay. And I thought I'd have cut that on the end. <laughs> Nobody but noticed. Some of, them, some of no. them do use that method, though. They use them. They, 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 yeah. They can go back the other way. Yeah. Thank you. But the thank one you. time I did that, I have a scar because I, <laughs> I went in between my but two Jesus, fingers. Jesus knows he's not going to cut. That's his, true. Yeah. Gonna, he, that he, is true. Technically, you're going to win this argument. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like how even you know I, I watched that interview you had with the guy that plays Jesus, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, Jonathan, which I liked. As much as the show, so I highly mm -hmm. recommend that. I noticed there was over a million people that had seen that in a, in about a year because it's awesome. Because mm -hmm. here's this poor guy. I'm like, you think of the weight of what you're doing. Okay, you be Jesus. Don't screw that up. And so uh, it was just. I'm so glad you did that. But in that interview, you you mentioned something that I think is very important. Is that you know Jesus represents man and God. Right. And it's not really a 50-50, it just is. Right. He, he's he's that bridge. And so I'd like for you to talk about just how you've seen his transformation based on that interview, because you, know, you, you could sense the weight of that right. upon him. Yeah. Hang on, Dennis, let's take a break before we do that. So one of the things we talk about a lot on this show is inflammation. It's a It's a bummer. I have none. <laughs> because why, Dad? Why yeah. do you not have inflammation? The pristine waters of New Zealand came came by one Dude, day. You're such an oak now. <laughs> he is. You're an oak. I'm 75 without any aches, I can tell you that. That's right. And, not one ache. And it links back to, to us trying Omega XL, which is a great product. Uh, 35 years of clinical research has gone into basically attacking inflammation. That's what this is all about. So it was good for us. We hope you'll check it out. So here's how you get started. You order Omega XL by going to OmegaXL.com slash fill. You buy one bottle, you get a second bottle for free. That's OmegaXL.com slash fill. Or you can call them 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Buy one bottle, get a second one free, and get rid of inflammation. thing that has weighed down Jonathan in two ways playing Jesus one is to get it right for the show right and how do you get in character to play Jesus because that's what most actors do they want to they want to deliver the character's intentions and he says the only way I can do it is to empty myself and let the words that have been written for me just come and and to try to be as less of myself as possible you know, may he increase, may I decrease. And I remember there was a moment on the set in season one when he was 
delivering essentially a sermon to a group of people who'd gathered around the house. And um, he pulled me aside. He got emotional. And he, he says, I, I, I'm, this is making me nervous preaching these people. I don't, I don't feel worthy of this. And I said, Oh gosh, Jonathan, none of us are. I mean, I'm not worthy to be here either. Like, let's just, let's, let's embrace that. Let's like, that's, that's the whole point. Yeah. That's the whole point of the show. That's the whole point of the gospel. That's the whole point of Jesus is none of us are worthy. So let's, let's, let's hold on to this for the rest of the time that we're filming this show. Let's never forget this moment that we're not worthy. That's the only chance we have of getting anywhere close to, to this because we can't do it. But then the other thing is, of course, people, when they meet him in person now, now that the show is really starting to take off, he's dealing with just the discomfort of that. People meeting him and being like, oh, my goodness. Like, to, yeah, he yeah. said that, like, coming up and touching his shoulder, and he's looking around like, well. Yeah. Did y'all know. have anyone to advise you? Because I thought you did a, not having been there 2,000 years ago, Roman Empire, but did you have anybody to kind of uh, coach you on what the the living quarters and – because the scenes, your your sets, yeah. I mean, they were. It, it was really a great thing. I thought. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was uh, unlike rougher seen, than yeah. I rougher, rougher, right? Kind of rougher than I was. Kind of, you know, you read the Bible. Well, they didn't have you, electricity. It's well, like when Jesus was starting the fire. I love. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. You, you're balancing that. He could start a fire. I mean, they were constantly <laughs> washing their feet throughout right. the episodes. Because think about it. I mean. I just thought of the what I what I want to say, uh uh all this thing about cleanliness and all right. the purity. The, yeah. Purity laws. I mean yeah. y'all presented mm-hmm. this thing where, you know, you talk about pandemics could go through a place. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could see how plagues and whatever right. could just go through a place. But the who did you have anybody to coach you on on what, what two thousand year old Roman Roman Empire looked like? Yeah. So Two things. One is, I, in all the Jesus projects that I've seen, I've seen all the Jesus movies and miniseries, and I always felt this distance. I yeah, felt me too. Je- Jesus was kind of boring and formal, and he quoted King James English. Yeah, right. yeah. And then the look of it too. I just thought, I thought they lived in kind of in the desert conditions, and it was always yeah. dirty, and they were very poor. Yeah. And so we worked hard on our production design department and our wardrobe department. You did great. But on you this. went to Israel, just like me. Yeah. I mean, when I went. What was it four years ago? Four or five years ago? Were the ago? streets like narrow little passageways? Well, like that? once you got out to around the Sea of Galilee, it looks exactly like your sets when he. Right. Uh, I was thinking of that episode when Jesus was healing people, but he, he's not seen the whole time. And everyone's kind of having the, a typical argument. It yeah, was the really. Disciples, the disciples are backstage while Jesus is healing. Yeah, it was a healing really them. powerful show. I mean, it oh. was just, boy, I, we, it, it's a something that makes you look at your own life because you don't you, we complain we don't realize we're complaining right and then you kind of look up if you happen to have jesus the real jesus here you're like what am i doing he's out here <laughs> yeah he's you know, doing god's working. work and we're out here complaining about legitimate things right. but we're still complaining but that the way that but scene we, looked, before every scene um we have a person in our wardrobe department and i'm really insistent on this i always want everyone to look sweaty and dirty and we have yeah. a person who has a sock full of um uh, what's that white white powder that you put on your your uh, boots like when you're walking through to, so yeah. you don't get t- ticks like sulfur powder and whatnot yeah, yeah we just get the ticks but yeah, yeah. i got you you know <laughs> we pull them off later yeah. but yeah, see, like i said i'm a rugged endorsement so <laughs> kill them later but, but we we get them we put dust and dirt on them all the time because i want you to yeah. feel the texture and you just said the rough the roughness yeah. of it we the walls we make sure are rough nothing yeah. is smooth nothing is polished um and that's what jesus came into and that's yeah. what's hard for people to to sometimes come to grips with. And I feel like you've been wanting to talk about this a little bit is the whole God versus man thing. Yeah. And Jesus, you know, having to start a fire and dressing a wound and stretching out yeah. sore muscles. That's been the number one thing that has caused the most controversy about the show is where does the God versus man thing stop mm-hmm. and, and, and begin? How, you know, we believe... I assume we're brothers here. We believe that Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. Exactly. So how do you explain that? what does that that? look like? Yeah, it's very difficult to explain. But did he walk around? He walked down. Everyone's thoughts are just coming in his head. He's just 24-7. He's got the the God goggles on, as one of the scholars said. But Jesus himself said in the Gospels, there are things the Father knows that I don't. He he knows the time only the Father knows. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was begging the Father to essentially change his mind. Please take this cup from me. When he's on the cross, he's asking 
His father, yeah. why have you forsaken me? So we take this belief that that Jesus couldn't bench press 5,000 pounds when he was on earth. He, right. he couldn't just, mm-hmm. you know, blow and the fire could start. Now, maybe if he wanted to ask his father well, right. for, yeah. for the power to do that, yes, of course, he could do miracles. But we just, we really, th- I just think it's so much more powerful um, and I believe it's biblical to see Jesus as a as a true human sacrifice, for lack of a better term. He was a man. Right. Oh, he became he, a man. I mean, Philippians 2 says he emptied himself. Well, what did he empty? He said it something. Was, and he, he did not see equality with God as something to be done. Yeah, right. right. So Which is clearly he gave something up right. to be to, to feel what we felt and go through what we felt. Hebrew, and I just don't think doing it in a polished way is, is Hebrews what the Bible 2, said. he had yeah. to be a man like his brothers in every way. Which that means everything. I mean, right. that means full humanity. So, yeah, I, I thought that's the, one I of my think, favorite things. I think too. what the the modern day Pharisee is missing is what what's a, what's really made me drawn to your show is this. Even when you talked about Jonathan struggling with that, well, this is what we all as individuals who have surrendered to Christ. This has been my struggle for thirty years. I, I'm trying to right. introduce Jesus to other people and you know based on galatians 2 20 i've been crucified with christ i no longer live so so i'm trying to just get out of the way and let jesus right. be revealed and and i've shared in all my speeches and wherever i go my biggest fear in life is public speaking hmm. that's all i do now right so you're like <laughs> how did this happen like phil says boy i won't shut up <laughs> Right. But I'm like, it, it is for real because I feel inadequate. I feel the weight because I'm I'm trying not to screw this up. And so every speech I give, the last one I gave, I came home. I had to go. I was like, terrible for my view. But I'm sure it was great. But right. but it's just I struggle with that. So I feel like I see that in your meetings and how we're going to present this. God uses flawed people to make Jesus known. That's just a fact. By the way, you know. Yeah. So how far, because, you know, I hate to see it end. So how far would you go into the future? He's on his way to dying for the sins of the world, being buried and raised from the dead. Well, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. So you start Tell back. us what you can. Yeah. And then I want to give you But you, you know, they challenge. could start in the book of Acts. Well, I was going to say that. Keep going. We'll let yeah. you comment. But I was going to say this, because I got to thinking, since you decided, okay, we're going to do about the chosen. And then most shows, like The Passion, which was a great film, sure, they end right at the resurrection, just the idea of the resurrection. Right. But I thought, well, if it's about the chosen, couldn't you go on into the book of Acts? We can. Um, but I mean, when have, we you, first... have you thought about, like, like, how far can we run this? Because it's a wonderful thing you're doing. Yeah. yeah. We want more is what I'm trying yeah, to yeah. tell you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, my wife, my, my wife is in the room and might be saying we're going to take a year to sleep after the, the <laughs> seven true. seasons of the chosen That's true. so we R- remember people said why does that dynasty have to is and we were like because we love your show you know what? we were like yeah. well i felt the same way i thought let me sleep for a year <laughs> right. and get back to you but we when look we're, we're we're crowdfunded i mean the season one of this show is based on a short film that i did for my church's christmas eve service on my friend's farm in illinois we're, we feel like we're on house playing with the house money, you know, to use yeah. a gambling term, but we, we didn't know if we were, how long we were going to last. We don't have a big studio writing us a check saying, all right, here's yeah. the next seven seasons. Like all these other shows have, um, we are relying solely on the fans to pay it forward because the show's free. Yeah. So people pay it forward Love to it. keep it free if they want, uh, or they buy shirts and, and our books, our devotional books and our Bible study and all that stuff. That's the way, that's how we survive. Which is absolutely so, one of the other reasons that I love this, because yeah. that's a leap of faith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I mean, once they start shoveling the money to you, yeah. they, I mean, yes, they, quite a, an array of them, they begin to dictate policy. Well, that's the golden rule uh, from Hollywood, is he who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> you got it. And so <laughs> yes, we're, stay out of the weeds, my man. Right. <laughs> well, so I, this is something I want to share with you, is because you're talking about um, the authenticity of things. And, and, you know, I think what has made your show so, so successful and what people have responded to so much with your whole family is the authenticity. You come out and you say, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a good public speaker. You're so authentic. And that has honestly been a, a model for me as well. I mean, I, I can honestly say that watching you guys over the years and uh, even the name of your podcast, Unashamed, 
but just being completely who you are um, has, has been a model for us with this show is yeah. from day one. We said, look, whatever God wants is where we want to be. I don't know if it's going to last seven seasons, which is what we think we need. I don't know if it's going to last one season. I don't know. I just want to be in God's will and I'm going to be myself and our social media videos are going to be raw and the show's going to be raw and we're just going to follow in Jesus's footsteps. And wherever that leads is where it's hard, it leads. It's hard to argue with that. Let's take another break. So uh, we've been uh, talking a lot about how many guns uh, there are out there and how many have been sold. And I, I think I said this before, in 2020, there were over 8 million guns sold in America, which is amazing. The problem is now you can't hardly practice because you can't find any ammunition you know, to be, for your gun. So you got an issue here. One is you want to have ammunition to protect yourself, but then you also want to get proficient with your firearm. So one of our uh, longtime sponsors, iTarget Pro, uh, works on a dry firing training method where you have it through your cell phone and uh, you have a laser bullet that goes into your gun. And so you're able to basically shoot a target and find out, you know, how proficient you are. So it's a very good process. You can do it inside. You, you get that muscle memory, which is what you need. Uh, they have 223 AR, so you can stay sharp. Today you can save 10% plus Get free shipping with the offer code Phil at checkout when you go to itargetpro.com. That's the letter I, targetpro.com. Use the offer code Phil and get that 10% off and free shipping. I would say this. I do think what we have in common is back when we were doing Duck Dynasty, we are the people we were working with. We were not uh, what's the what's the best way to say that? We were complete opposites, and so they had an idea of how we should be. Right. But we're so stubborn and had our faith and trust in God that we're like we're not budging. We're going to be ourselves. So what I missed during those conflicts because every week we would argue all week about what we were going to do, even though the show started being successful. They were like, "This is what." What you should do, and we were we'd say, nope, we're going to be ourselves, just as what you said. But that conflict actually created great TV because we would argue so much that when they turned the cameras on, I was so passionate that I was right and they right. were wrong. Right. It actually came out in our filming. And so I thought about y'all's show. I was like, your conflict is more with yourselves, not wanting to screw this up. Yeah that you're thinking so much and looking at every detail. And then I think the passion comes out, you know, in the episodes because you're just driven to say, okay, we want to get out of the way. And so I do think there's a similarity. Yeah. There. I think there's, I think there's truth to that. I think there's also um, a responsibility to the audience as much as possible, but you're, it's a responsibility to an audience that has 9,000 different perspectives on every single scene that you do. Yes. Right. So we'll right. have, we'll get yeah. a thousand emails saying, how dare you do that scene uh, that was offensive mm -hmm. or showing Jesus tell a joke or Jesus being sarcastic or whatever it was. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that'll be the exact thing that we hear from other people saying that was my favorite part. Yeah. Oh, exactly. That's what brought me closer to Jesus. Yeah. Um, Jesus winks at somebody in episode two of season one. Oh, so I love it. A guy yeah. makes a joke about his hometown. He says, yeah. well, I guess something good can come from Nazareth. <laughs> and everyone freezes thinking Jesus is going to be offended. Yeah, and he's like, not and Jesus once did I see any of the material <laughs> you put out. Not once did I say, well, no, well, is it? No, no, well, no, that means a lot. Spoiler no, alert. Was. There's a scene. I don't even know if this episode's out yet. Because because I noticed once we gave a donation, we started getting the episodes for everybody else. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. Maybe I shouldn't even say that. No, you, no, no. Oh. You, people who pay it forward at a certain level or higher um, get yeah. get to see the episodes a day in advance. So yeah. there was one one episode, and I won't because I, I don't want to mess it up for somebody. No, 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 no one has. So, all the episodes that you've seen are out okay. right now. So, so something happens. And uh, one of the followers, because it's it's awesome that Jesus does, and there's like this awkward silence. Oh, there's an right. America when he goes, there's one of the characters who I can identify with, Phil, you more than and me. And who has a beard like yours. Yeah, looks like my cousin, yeah. actually. <laughs> he goes, yes! Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Because that's me. That's right. what I was thinking. If I was there and I saw a miracle, and it was of that nature of a spiritual warfare, I'd be like, because yeah. everybody else was like, oh, just my shock. goodness, yeah. I can't believe what I just saw. Then there's a guy ready to go to war over saying, yes, yeah. <laughs> I love it. But I'm sure that somebody somewhere is like, oh, you know, 
Yeah, it wasn't it? well. Yeah, because some people because it see, wasn't reverent or yeah, they yeah, yeah they'll talk about the reverence and yeah. some of the music in the show they feel isn't reverent or, but the, but in that that scene in episode two of season one where Jesus winks at him, um, mo- I, I've heard from literally thousands of people who've said seeing Jesus wink, and reassure this guy that he was okay, like impacted me greatly. Mm. It, it's one of my like, top three scenes yeah. of the whole series right. when he does that little wink. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Right. And I've heard from others who said, well, there's a verse in the book of Psalms where it talks oh, about boy. how if you wink your eye, you're something, <laughs> is the devil or whatever. Yeah, and shuffle your feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm going. <laughs> okay. But but that's the thing. So mm. the, the whole point of it is all I can do, I can't please oh, well, right. everybody when you're doing a Jesus show. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the show is now in every country in the world. It's been translated in over 50 languages, Catholics, Mormons, evangelicals, Greek Orthodox, they're all coming to the same fan club. They're all loving the show. And then they look around and they're like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be here. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. What are you doing? And, and then they, and then they start putting expectations onto the show and Mm. what the, what it's supposed to look like and how Jesus is supposed to be portrayed. And if I, if I think about that and if I care about it, it's going to cripple me. Right. And so I have to get to a place where I think where you guys at, where you guys were at with the show, I think it's a superpower where you go, if you don't want to do the show, with us being ourselves, then let's just not do the show. Oh, yeah. That's just fine. think about it. All this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just think about what Jesus was up against. Being 100% flawlessly perfect. Right? Yeah. And goes into a world, a sin-cursed world, and he's being perfect. Just think how hard it would be to present yourself Knowing you're perfect, right, and hmm. living up to that, right. You talk about a bone to be chewed. <laughs> but Phil, so you y'all. make a good point. When you did the episode, you introduced Jesus with the kids, because yep. I know where you got that. Because those passages about where he always, unless you change and become like little children, right. you know, he loved kids. And yeah. I like at first for one fleeting moment, I'm like, okay, there's an adult man, and these kids are running away right. to go visit. At any other point in life, I would feel very uncomfortable about this. Right. Because if there's an adult, strange man with yeah. a bunch of kids, right. that's yeah. always going down a bad road in any kind of movie. Right. And I yeah. thought, oh, but it's Jesus. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> He's awesome. Perfect. I trust this. Oh, I thought this it was person. a stroke of genius. Uh, stroke you know, of genius. That. And that's why I was going to say about the people who are offended. Look, I can think of every other movie that or TV series that's ever been made in the history of man, if you're a religious person, you could be offended about. Right. If you just ranked them in order. Yeah. At least this is trying to get you to think about who Jesus is. I mean, when I'm saying you get into the secular world, right? I mean, we're talking F-bombs and gender. Well, by the way, what about the secular crowd out here, the unbelievers, the atheists? Yeah. Have they risen up against you too, I guess? To no. In fact, I, I have less... What are they saying? I have less less res, uh, um, pushback from that crowd than I yeah. do from the Christian Well, we're the same us. way. Which <laughs> we know it's a lot of the same. Let's take yeah. one last break. Well, you know, Dallas, one of the things that struck me, the attention to detail for every character, or every not even a character, just every scene that you see of people like it got me right off the bat in the pilot with the with the shepherd Mm. and just from moment one like i cared about what happened to it and then i loved the little girl skipping across the field i mean that whole thing Mm -hmm. you know it set that whole thing up so i I feel like one of the brilliant things you guys have done and bringing it to to film and bring it to screen is that you really care about the ones around him yes and that's i mean i had never to be honest i've preached and taught my whole life and you tend to focus on the main people right. but i've never cared as much about everybody around him as i have watching That's the right. series and That's so right. I, I think that part really spoke to me and speaks to me about that you know? well and that's the thing when 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 you watch a normal tv show uh, even a show with Matt Matt Dillon <laughs> um, <laughs> you 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 want to identify with the main character right you want to see kind of the world through their eyes well jesus is a tough main character for a, for a movie That's because right. you, he, he doesn't, he doesn't change really. He doesn't, he doesn't learn anything new. He doesn't, he doesn't sin and then have to kind of overcome his struggle. Right. Yeah. And so as a viewer, you kind of go, I can't really see the world through his eyes. Right. 
but I know Simon Peter. I can relate to that. I can relate to Mary Magdalene. I can relate to Nicodemus. And then when you see in Jesus through their eyes and you encounter him, and I think that's also true of some of these supporting characters, as we call them. Right. In season three, we're going to explore the woman who who had the issue of blood for 10 years and how she reached for Jesus's garment and, and touched him and she was healed. Mm-hmm. Well, just let's 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 explore that. What would it have been like to live in a purity culture? Yeah. Obsessed with purity where you're unclean for 10 years yeah. every day. Right. What desperate, how desperate must you have been? And so desperate, especially as a woman. So you're yeah. a woman, you have all these other rules you have to follow. And she's like, I can't, I can't reach him. I can't get all I'm gonna maybe if I just grab his garment. So we're gonna explore her story. And we're right. gonna explore her story from the context of that culture. And I believe that there are gonna be women, especially, who are gonna be like their relationship with Mary Magdalene in the show, and be like, I have I have felt that. Maybe then maybe not that specific malady. Maybe I'm not, maybe I wasn't here 2000 years ago, but I can relate yeah. to that feeling of I'm an outcast. I have nothing. All I can do is reach out as far and as strong as I can. Oh, I love it. I think y'all have done a phenomenal job too of, of the women characters in there. You know, acts one is so power, powerful to me when it says the believers were all together, you know, this post-resurrection and it says about 120, which is such a depressing number. Now, I don't know if it was just all of them in that specific reason, you know, region, but you would think, where, where are all these people? I mean, he's 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 been raised, but it says they were constantly together with prayer, and it says along with the women. Right. And even in all these little moments in history, y'all y'all studied so much, which I think the first thing that I, I, I want to say this, that pops up there is you say this is a show, uh, a depiction of, but it says, read your Bible. Read oh, yeah, the, what, what, what the is opening, that? Yeah, yeah, at uh, the beginning, it says this is, you know, based on the book of, you know, on, on the Bible. Uh, some of the timelines have been combined, you know, because yeah. we, we don't stick to Scripture. All, I mean, we don't contradict Scripture, but we do a lot of things that aren't in Scripture. But it says viewers are encouraged to read the Gospels. Yeah, that, that's um, what it says. Yeah. So you know, I think that know, should be what you send to the people who say, what is that? Just send them that. You know, <laughs> even Matt Dillon... <laughs> uh, there's a warning now. Warning, warning. It says before you watch an episode of Matt Dillon, right. Gunsmoke, right. started in the 50s, 40s, 40s, 50s. 40s. It says on the screen, outdated cultural depiction. Oh. Oh, good grief. <laughs> They're like, it's a warning here. Because, yeah. you know, you know, old Matt, you know, law and order. I mean, he stood, <laughs> stood firm. Well, to show the, what they're doing with what they've done here on these episodes, you know, you say, how much has changed between 2021 years ago as far as man's problem? You say, no, man, that's the same. Yeah. The solution It's just to the a problem, reminder that we're in a spiritual God. war. You yeah. Know? yeah. It, this is, I mean, have you figured out how to depict a guy walking around with a two before coming out of his eye? Have you, <laughs> I was trying y'all to read where your you're Bible going before <laughs> you try to get the speck of dust? Because so really, you think we're all flawed, which was the point I was making about what we have in common. And when we present Jesus in our everyday lives, because I'm, I feel like the power of your show is when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It seems like there's, it's just filled with these little moments right. of individuals. Which is what you've captured, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's what my life is. You know, I, I everywhere I go and everywhere I speak, I'm like everybody can relax. Even though I look like a preacher, I'm not. <laughs> they all laugh, <laughs> right? And I was like, I'm not a preacher. I, I'm a believer, and I believe Jesus is real. And I'm not really concerned about what happens here on Sunday mornings because you can pretend right. to be one up. You know, one of the members. What I'm concerned about is what happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when you right. go to the grocery store, you go to school, when you look, open up your computer and the internet, and you got your cell phone, all these things. Are you having these Jesus moments that he had these little moments with right. individuals? So I think you've that's, done really well with that. Well, that's huge. And that's honestly the the, the thing we've most focused on in the show. And it's the thing I, when sometimes people ask me, what have you learned most about Jesus in doing this show? Because I've been a lover of God's word my whole life. My dad is an author of the Left Behind books. He's been a been a a believer his whole life. I mean, I've, I grew up in the church, but I'm still learning new things about Jesus. And the thing that I learned the most, I think when we were going through the gospels and telling these stories is the personal, he didn't come and do a ton of magic tricks in front of a big crowd to say, look, it was always about that one person. Even when he was doing, 
um, in our show, when you see um, him doing miracles, uh, we even in our, in our filmmaking will, will I'll make it so that your foot kind of the, the sound gets kind of more quiet. Like it gets really zoned in on Jesus looking right into the eyes of that person. Oh, yeah. And if you've watched the first, uh, so you've seen the first five uh, episodes. I've watched them all. Yeah. yeah. So there's 13 episodes so far. And I, I'm guessing it's probably about half a dozen times you've heard Jesus say, look at me, look at me, yeah. don't look at him, look at me, yeah. or don't look over there, look at me. It's about that intimacy. Yeah, that's And right. Jesus always made it into to that relationship with that one person. And uh, that is something that we're trying to do with the show too, is um, I feel like when I'm doing my live streams or when I'm doing the interview with, with the conversation with Jonathan that you talked about are behind the scenes. I'm trying to talk to one person yeah, and that makes it feel more intimate, but that's the model of Jesus that I've really learned is that, that it's about that relationship. If you can, if you can avoid these art public arguments, public theological arguments, public political arguments, and just have it be two yeah. people talking, it's so much more effective anyway. And it also, it, 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 it arouses this intimacy that, that is what I think God is after in our hearts. Yeah. So tell exactly. folks where they can get merchandise, uh, get the show where they can help. Uh, the books, the books. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell our audience so, where's the best place to go to yeah. get that information. So the number one place to go, and I know that this doesn't apply to all of us in this room, because some of you maybe God bless you're a little older and don't like the apps, yeah. but we have a, we have our own app. So, okay. uh, it's, if you go to wherever you get your phone apps on, you know, your Android or, or, or iPhone, and you download the chosen, we're really easy to find. And the good thing is it connects directly to your television. So Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, Chromecast, uh, you don't need a subscription. You don't need to pay anything. You don't need to give your email address, nothing. It'll connect directly to your to your streaming device. Now, if you're old school, we also have DVDs. <laughs> And that's in our... That would be out. Yeah. yeah. And Phil. Yeah. But I do know how to get an app, so I'm glad to know that. I didn't yeah. know app that. is not short for Apple, Phil. This yeah. is... It's complicated. Well, that's why we have Dan the eunuch. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he, uh, if you want something, some kind of computer whiz, Dan... That's going to be too hard to explain. I was going to say, Dan the eunuch. Phil's butler is... It's, is a, okay. It's, 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 it's complicated. Well, yeah. good. We'll have a eunuch on our show, too. So hey, we'll there see. you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, yeah, the app is is the highest quality. It connects directly to your streaming device. And again, the beauty of it is, I mean, they literally invented this technology. I could, I could go to your house and go to your Roku or Apple TV and just connect directly and watch the show on the big screen. Right. But we have the DVDs on our gift our gift factory. We've got the uh, shirts and hoodies and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're, you're I got one right here. You one, the bonus get, one. Get used to different. Get used to different. Which is yeah. a, a key line from from season one. Yeah. Um, mm. But here's something I want to say real quick. Anytime I talk about our, our gifts, because we call them gifts, not merchandise, because um, my wife who's in the room has written a, a devotional book and a Bible study, which I believe your mom is. Mom is doing it. Yeah. yeah. Her group, her ladies awesome. group. Yeah. I think they're four episodes in and they're doing the study. Every That's week. awesome. Yeah. But we have really worked hard to make sure that we don't ever do trinkets or just yeah. merchandise for the sake of it. Um, mm. everything has a purpose and is a conversation starter and is going to design to take you deeper. The show isn't the end game. Yeah. Getting you deeper into this is, is the end game. And so even the phrase get used to different, um, people, when we wear that out in public, people go, Oh, what, what, what do you, what does that mean? We talk yeah. about that. Well, that's Jesus says that in episode seven to Simon Peter. And, uh, that's why I brought it to you guys. Cause I know you guys can resonate with being different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard you say, you know, we're the ones that bring, you know, we bring our little fish and bring yeah. that and yeah, we bring the loaves and fish and God feeds the 5,000, but even <laughs> yeah. the shirt, even the shirt that I'm wearing now, it's the, from the opening credits, which yeah. is all those gray fish are going in one direction. Mm -hmm. And then one by one, they, they turn teal, the color of life and go the opposite direction. And so this yeah. is 13 fish. Jesus and the 12 disciples all going against the current. I love it. But it's all, it's all designed to really start conversations and bring yeah. people closer. But yeah, if you, on the app or on our website, I don't want to give a bunch of websites because people yeah. don't remember them anyway. Maybe you can do them in the show notes. But oh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll put, put it up we'll there. Put it on but top. that's where they can get I think all the, we'll, we got what we need. But look, yeah. thanks for being here. We love hey. what you do. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, well, you guys have been doing it for a long time. And, and I, one of the things you were going to talk about, which I know we don't have time for, we can talk about off the air, but is the model of doing this all outside the system. Yeah. Because I think there's something for you guys in that too, because you were saying yeah. this on the air. Be, I think Duck Dynasty would have a hard time being on the air today. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I would know so. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> we uh, couldn't get it made through a network. I don't yeah. Know. But the way we're doing it now and, the, and, and our distribution partner, Angel Studios, is building multiple projects like this, which are just done completely outside the system. And I'm telling you, it is a freeing yeah. feeling when you know that you're yeah. not owned by anybody yeah. and you don't have, you're not, you can't get canceled. 
Um, and you can just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Ooh, show let's talk, talk about this. And find me a cameo in here, even if I die in the first five minutes. It's okay. <laughs> just ride by on a donkey. <laughs> ride by on a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I like just, it. Just, just Jesus walking down the road. Just, how do you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just What's the story with that guy? <laughs> yeah. I'll, heal, I'll heal him later. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks, Dallas. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.